Acura today is operating as the luxury and performance arm of Honda in North America, but with the entire auto industry heating up with aggressive competition, can they survive? Acura first launched in Canada and the United States of America on March 27th of 1986, a full three years earlier than their Japanese competitors Lexus and Infiniti. The Japanese government at the time imposed voluntary export restraints for the US market, so it was more profitable for Japanese automakers to export more expensive cars to the US. Following a decade of research, Honda Motor Company opened 60 new dealerships in North America by 1986 for their launch of the Acura brand. They entered the market with the executive Legend sedan and the compact Integra 5-door and 3-door hatchback. May be the best result we've ever had. The Acura Integra. From a new division of American Honda, exclusively at Acura dealers. Many would believe the term Acura would mean something elegant in Japanese, while in reality the name is derived from the Latin term Acu, which means mechanically precise. Even the logo which many people, including myself, used to think is just the Honda H logo with the top closed in, while the actual logo is actually inspired by an inside caliper measuring tool. In its first few years of operations, Acura vehicles were among the best selling luxury brands in the US, even edging established brands such as BMW and Mercedes Benz. In Acura's first year of business, 1987, they were able to sell 109,000 vehicles. The flagship Acura Legend sedan accounted for over half that amount with 55,000 units. The rest were filled with the Acura Integra. By 1990, Acura was selling 138,000 vehicles per year compared to Mercedes-Benz 78,000 cars and 64,000 for BMW and Lexus each. In 1990, Acura introduced the NSX, which stands for New Sports Experimental, and was billed as the first Japanese car to compete with Ferrari and Porsche. It also was the introduction of Honda's well-known VTEC technology. The NSX was heavily marketed as the everyday supercar. It lived up to its marketing thanks to its ease of use, quality and reliability, which at the time was not common for supercars. The release of the NSX is also when they started to use their new caliper inspired logo. This all led to a strong start in the market and acceptance by consumers. Sales started to suffer mid to late 90s for the Acura brand. Critics were blaming the decline on less inspiring designs. North American customers started to recognize Acura cars as rebranded Japanese spec Hondas. Acura also switched their naming strategy to an alphanumeric formula inspired by the NSX. The 1996 Acura RL replaced the popular Legend and the Acura Vigor sedan became the TL. Late in the 1990s, the Japanese economy was declining due to the Japanese asset price bubble. This period is also known as the lost decade. Even the NSX had lost sales. The Integra sedan was withdrawn from the Canadian market and replaced with the Acura EL, which was at that time a rebadged Honda Civic while the Integra sedan was sold in the US until 2001. Despite letdowns like rebadged Hondas, quality getting worse, Acura saw a surge with young buyers, the tuner crowd who loved Acura cars for their ease of customization and rev happy engines. Beginning in the year 2000, Acura started experiencing a resurgence which was sparked by the redesign of several models. The first of which was the 1999 Acura TL 3.2. While it wasn't better than any of its competitors, it offered a well-rounded balance of sportiness and luxury with competitive pricing. The ever-popular Acura MDX was also introduced as well to replace the Isuzu Trooper-based SLX. The RSX, which was the Honda Spec Integra in other markets, also arrived. In 2004, a new TL model was introduced with a 270 horsepower V6 and sales dramatically increased over previous years to 70,943 units in 2005. 
While in 2005, the next generation Acura RL was shown off to the market featuring the first ever interpretation of Acura's exclusive super handling all-wheel drive system, a system that is capable of sending majority of the power to the rear wheels and further separate the power between left and right as needed. 2006 was the year Acura introduced their RDX compact crossover, one of the first luxury compact crossovers as well in its time. It was based on its unique unibody chassis. It was powered by a turbocharged four cylinder that made 240 horsepower. The first turbo engine used by Acura as well in their production lineup and it was also powered by the Acura RL's super handling all wheel drive. The mid 2000s were a great time for Acura as they had cars its customers were enjoying. The Acura RSX Type S, Acura TL Type S, the Acura RDX and MDX SUVs that were popular. Somewhere along the lines of this resurgence, Acura once again lost what it seemed to have found until the second downfall started again. By 2011, Acura announced the creation of the Acura ZDX, a new luxury crossover based on the MDX and was the first Acura designed in Acura's design studio located at Torrance in Southern California. It was also the first Acura to be completely built in North America. In 2012, the Acura ILX was introduced replacing the Canadian-specific Acura CSX and a new subcompact sedan for Acura. The TL got a new design change in 2012 into something bigger and bulkier while getting the super handling all-wheel drive system. The RDX got a generation change in 2013 without super handling all-wheel drive. By 2014, Acura's lineup was filled with lazy and uninspired cars following the beak design language as many have called it. No more Type S models, no NSX, and nothing that enthusiasts enjoyed. In 2014, the Acura TLX was born, combining and replacing the Acura TL and TSX sedans. While in 2015, Acura also introduced the new second generation NSX. The concept of this NSX was shown in the 2012 blockbuster hit The Avengers film, but was it too little too late for them? Despite the excitement of the legendary nameplate returning, Acura and Honda took a long time to bring it into the market despite teasing it for years. Despite the game-changing early tech the new NSX brought to the market, it wasn't received well due to its high price tag and lack of performance as the enthusiasts wanted no hybrid setup, less weight, rear-wheel drive, and a manual transmission. In 2018, Acura refreshed the TLX, inspired and based off of the Precision Concept sedan, which introduced a whole new design language for Acura, and back to its precision crafted roots. The A-Spec Sport appearance package was brought back into the mainstream limelight with a more consistent approach towards looks across the models. Acura also promised at that time it will bring back the Type S moniker with an exclusive turbocharged six-cylinder engine in development. In 2019, Acura introduced its all-new RDX model with super handling all-wheel drive and back with a turbocharged motor derived from the Honda Civic Type R. And these are the years Acura started to gain respect again as a luxury manufacturer. By 2021, Acura has had fun, sporty, performance, and luxurious vehicles in their lineup. The second generation Acura TLX was based on its own Acura exclusive platform, not sharing anything with Honda. And the TLX Type S had been introduced. Acura also promised a MDX Type S, the first of its kind to be out by spring of 2022. The NSX production ended with an exclusive Type S variant pushing power to an even 600 horsepower, with rumors of a next-gen Acura NSX being worked on in pure EV form. Acura has also brought back the Integra nameplate, although it has been to mainly negative reception, as it's based on the new Honda Civic hatchback. Acura has had its ups and downs throughout its existence, but it seems like that it may be taking steps in the right direction. Direction. And regardless of all the issues that any manufacturer has to work through in today's ever-changing competitive world in the automotive segment, it seems like Acura's future is looking bright as long as they take themselves seriously. Thanks for watching. What's next for these guys?